this autumn town where the leaves can fall on either side of the garden wall. We laugh all night to keep the embers glowing. Some are leaping free from their moving cars, stacking stones round their broken hearts, waving down. Okay, I know it's only August, I know, but hear me out. September is so close, it's right around the corner and I'm feeling already in my heart all things cozy and pumpkin spice and autumnal and okay, I'm getting ahead of myself, I need to backtrack. I've heard from you guys over and over that my fall content is your favorite content. You might have even found me through my fall videos. I really think my heart is full of pumpkin spice, like uh, it is my favorite, so you guys telling me that just Oh. And when fall comes around every year, I only have so much time to make fall content. I can usually get two videos out per month. So if I wait until September, we only get two videos in September and two videos in October for fall. I know that November is still fall, but it's kind of a different vibe, you know? So if I can start in August, then you guys have more videos to watch going forward. So if you're not in the pumpkin spice state of mind right now, I totally understand. You can come back to this video later. But if you are ready to talk all things cozy, I thought we could talk about all of the books that are on my reading list, the trips I'm planning for this fall, some fall inspired items that I'm really looking forward to getting from small businesses, and my first Halloween hunt of 2023. And if you don't know what that is, you will in just a second. So before we get into planning, join me on my first Halloween hunt of 2023, where I find some treasures that I'm really excited about. <laughs> Was the sun shining, fist fight every storm to let the whole world freeze if it might not keep you warm Cause all I need is your smile, nothing more But if I couldn't have it, love, I'd let the whole world pour I loved you once and I know I love you still I know I love you still, Lord, I know I love you still Me, me back in those Colorado films, know that you once loved them, probably always will. But we were only 17 when I caught you in my soft and yellow sky. Oh, I was only halfway to life when you caught me in the corner. planning, I want to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, June's Journey, which I'm so, so excited about because I genuinely, truly love this game. Just this past weekend, we were flying back from the Eras tour and I was playing it in the airport. I cannot be stopped. It's so good. It's so beautiful. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself though. Let me tell you about it. So June's Journey is a free to download hidden object mystery game. You follow this detective storyline as you're transported back to the glamor of the 1920s. The art, the aesthetic of this game. Sometimes I pause playing just so I can enjoy the ambiance. You follow the main character, June, as she tries to figure out who murdered her sister. I love that there is that 
overarching story and you get to meet so many cool characters and then the scenes where you find the hidden objects are so fun because they start out really easy and i think like i got this this is fine and then by the end i have my phone up here and i'm like where is it <laughs> it's so so fun there are prompts for which items to find so you know what you're looking for i also really enjoy playing this when i'm feeling a bit anxious or just a bit stressed it's a great way for me to distract my brain from all of the other things that I need to get done and just take 10 minutes to relax because it is really fast paced and you are focused on these individual objects that you're looking for. Your brain doesn't really have time to think about anything else. So it's a great little escape. When you're not looking for the hidden objects, you have an island with a mansion. You can customize everything and decorate it. There are just so many things to do. You can never get bored. I highly recommend downloading it. I think you guys will really enjoy it even just for the art alone. If you would like to check out June's journey, you can download it for free by clicking on the link down in the description box or scanning the QR code up on the screen. June's journey is available on Android and iOS mobile devices, as well as PC through Facebook games. A big thank you to June's journey for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. Now let's get back to planning. For books, I have so many on my list this fall. I think I'm just gonna kind of rapid fire through some of them. I will say I was at the bookstore the other day and I found so many autumnal cozy mysteries. I couldn't help myself. I bought so many. They're just so perfect to curl up with on an early September day when it's still not too cold outside. They just really are such a cozy experience. I didn't really read the synopsis for most of them, honestly. I bought them because of the cover and I'm not ashamed to say so. However, I did read the synopses afterwards and they all do sound very intriguing. So far, the rest of my reading list consists of these books. My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. All I know is that it's about a girl who I think is desperate for money and has a roommate move in and he ends up being a vampire. I don't know anything other than that. I think it's gonna be kind of like rom-com. I'm very excited to see if it's gonna be any good. And then this is the book that I'm probably most anticipating and that is The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic by Brianne Randall. She describes this book as being practical magic meets Gilmore Girls. And that's all I needed to know to be extremely interested. I just know I'm gonna love it. I have been looking and trying to find a good dark academia book that I can read this fall, All That Consumes Us by Erica Waters. It's about a girl who goes to a prestigious university University and gets inducted into this secret society that she thinks is gonna be a place where she can find friendship and found family, but ends up actually being quite sinister and not at all what she thought it was going to be. And that's all I really know. But I know it has a setting of going back to school and I've read a few pages from it already and it seems very atmospheric. Just within a few pages, there's already visits to the cemetery and leaves falling and classes and homework. I love a good dark academia book. And then another dark academia book, A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. These dark academia books are killing it with the covers. I don't know what it's about, but I know that it's dark academia and the cover is beautiful. And I know Ava Reed is is a wonderful author, so it had to be on my list. And then for witchy books, there is Slewfoot, A Tale of Witchery by Brom. This one I think is definitely gonna lean more into the horror genre. I love anything historical and witchy. I'll probably go to the library, flip through it, and see if it looks interesting to me. And if you don't know me, or if you found me a few years ago, <laughs> you'll know that I love vampire books. I'm always on a hunt for a good vampire book. So I was browsing Amazon one day, and I saw this book called The Lights of Prague by Nicole Jarvis. Again, all I know is that it is historical. I assume it's set in Prague and it's about vampires and that's all I needed to know. And then for a cozy, wholesome autumnal book, there's Truly Madly Sheeply, A Pumpkin Falls Mystery by Heather Vogel Frederick. If the camera looks like it has moved, that's because I just had a little panic attack. I felt something start to crawl right here and it was a black spider and I may have cried just a tiny bit. Um, I guess I just knew that I'm doing an autumn video today and it was like, I wanna be in the video. 
Truly Madly Sheeply is a cozy middle grade mystery. It's very wholesome, something that your whole family could read. I mean, I assume that based on the description, but I could be wrong. Oh, okay, this one I'm so excited about. Every fall, I am so excited to read the new Lindsay Curry book. She is the best writer of spooky middle grade books that I've ever personally read. They are always so atmospheric. They're spooky, they usually involve ghosts and this one is no different. It involves a haunted cemetery and a group of kids who play hide and seek in said haunted cemetery and one of them goes missing. I think it also is gonna have Nancy Drew vibes because our main character loves sleuthing and solving mysteries. So I think this one is just going to be perfect for the kind of nostalgic Nancy Drew sleuthing vibes. I just know it's gonna be so good. Now, if you're like me and you love a good dark academia book, but also want to make it witchy, I think you might want to put this book on your list as well. It's called Modern Divination. It's by Isabel Agajanian. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong. I know that it is Rivals to Lovers. It's about these two witches and I know they're staying in a cabin in the woods, I think to protect her. I'm not really sure, but I know that it's dark academia, which is a little bit spooky and very atmospheric. And then there's A Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Hand. I think this is like a reimagining of The Haunting of Hill House, which is one of my favorite spooky books. Shirley Jackson was such a genius with The Haunting of Hill House, so I'm interested to see kind of what take it's gonna have on the story. And then there's Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. She wrote the Truly Devious series, and this is the fifth book in the series, but I've heard some people say you can read it as a standalone because it takes place, I think, after the first four books kind of wrap up. This is about the main character going to visit her boyfriend in England, and I think they go stay at this estate in the countryside that the author says is like a murder mansion. So I think I'm gonna read this without having read all of the Truly Devious series. I read the first book, but I didn't continue the series. I love the cover with the orange leaves and I think it might kind of have like Knives Out vibes, so we'll see. Okay, and then there's Cider Mill Coven by Vanessa Abigail Lambert. I saw some reviews that said this is also very much like witches meet Gilmore Girls and Stars Hollow. If you're looking for new witchy books to read, you might wanna put this one on your radar. And then for a wholesome, just very slightly spooky middle grade book is The House of Derelict, Dere this dyslexic girl is wondering if she's saying that right. Dere Dereliction. I'm gonna be embarrassed if I'm not saying that right. By Jacqueline Davies. The main character is this girl who loves to fix things and her family moves into a house and next door is this dilapidated but spooky mansion and she decides she wants to go fix it up. And while she's there, I think she meets a couple spirits, but I don't think it's gonna be spooky. I think it's gonna be more wholesome. Like she maybe helps them with their unfinished business or becomes friends with them in some way. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it's more on the wholesome cozy side instead of the spooky side. And then this is a book I've wanted to read for quite a few years now, and that is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. It's about these grave diggers. And I think there's actually like zombies in this book. And I think it's also fantasy, but it sounds really interesting. And I've seen some reviews that say really, really good things about it. You guys know I love cemeteries. I think it might be historical, but I'm not sure. And the cover is just stunning. And then there's Veil by Tess Bentley. This was definitely added to my list because of the cover. It comes out in October. I think this is historical. But other than that, I really don't know what it's about. Um, so we can go look this one up together. <laughs> I don't even know if it's set during autumn. I just felt like it was by looking at the cover, but I could be totally wrong. I just think it's so beautiful. Okay, let's move on to some of the things that are on my wish list for this fall. These are all specifically from small businesses. I think most of them are. The first and the most near and dear to my heart, Mythology Candles. I get their candles every fall. My favorite candle of all time is from Mythology Candles candles is called Book of Kells. It smells like ocean mist, damp library with leather bound books. I don't know how to describe it. It's indescribable. It's so good. I also really love the Tudor House library candle. I have so many good ones. So every autumn I always stock up on their candles. Oh, and then I have been eyeing this for I think like two years now. It's the cinnamon patchwork cardigan from the shop I Feel So Cool. It's so beautiful. It's my dream fall cardigan. I love 
love the color. I love the length. I am obsessed with it. I just think it would be the perfect cardigan to slip on in the mornings when I cozy up with a book. This is the year I'm gonna get it. Along with that, oh my gosh, the sweaters from KJP, they're a bit pricey. They, they are but I have been wanting one for like three years now. I look at them every fall and I have actually been saving for one. So I just don't know which one I wanna get. There are too many to choose from. I literally want all of them. And then Ash Elizabeth Art makes these beautiful like pendant necklaces with woodland creatures. She has limited release drops. So I'm always following her Instagram to see when she is dropping new necklaces. She is so talented. They are so beautiful. Just the perfect necklace that I would wear with any outfit during fall. And then lastly, there's an Etsy shop called The Witch Cabin and they have pumpkin berets. They're so cute. So perfectly cottage core cozy. I would wear this beret out everywhere. I feel like a cute little pumpkin and it would just make me so happy. So let's start with some of the trips that I want to take. I have three planned, but I would love to plan more. It's just about how many I can fit in. The first one is Salem, Massachusetts. I went last year, but I went during October and it was insane. <laughs> As a West Coast girly who just moved to New England, I feel like it's calling me there and I have to go. There are so many things I want to do. I wanna to go to the witchery, which is this really cool place. And I wanna do two things there. I want to make a broom. You get to choose everything, the sticks, the twigs, the like ribbons, you can add like, tassels and trinkets and stuff to it. And I also wanna take a book binding workshop. If you're into witchy stuff, you can make it like a spell book or you can even just use it as a journal. And then I definitely wanna go shopping. Salem has amazing shops. Some of my favorites that I wanna go back to are Emporium 32. That one is probably my most favorite shop in all of Salem. So if you are planning a trip to Salem, highly recommend checking out Emporium 32. It's like this magical witchy mix of a lot of things that are like vintage themed. They have candles, they have jewelry, they have hats, books, the cutest matches, like little details. They have so many beautiful things. And then if you want to feel like you're stepping into Harry Potter, there's a store called Why Not's Wands where you can choose your own wand. And the lady who runs the shop, she is so knowledgeable about the wood. She'll tell you like what type of wand you should choose based on your personality and things like that. It's more than a shop, it's an experience. I also really want to go back to the Coven's Cottage. This is also like a very witchy shop. It's just beautifully decorated on the inside, the outside. There's so much in there. I love it. And then I haven't been to this one yet, but it's Nocturne. I've seen beautiful pictures. You can probably pick up on the fact that I choose to go to the stores that feel like an experience rather than just shopping for stuff. Nocturne is definitely an experience based on the photos that I've seen. I really tend to lean towards the vintage spooky type shops rather than modern day items. And then after I'm done shopping, I want to visit some of the historic places like the Burying Point, which is Salem's oldest burial ground. I also want to go on a Salem night ghost tour where you visit some of the well-known and also less well-known places in Salem to learn all about the haunted history. And I want to visit the Salem Pioneer Village, which you feel like you're stepping back in time when you go there. And this is actually where they filmed the opening for Hocus Pocus when Thackeray Binks and his sister are outside and it looks like you're back in time. That's exactly how it feels when you step into the Pioneer Village. It's beautiful. I briefly went there last year and I'm really excited to go back. And then along with that, I want to visit the witch house as well. You've probably seen pictures of this house. It's beautiful, but last time there were so many people, it was crazy. So really want to go back when I can get a picture in front of the house without like 50 other people trying to do the same thing. And for accommodation, I want to spend the night at the Haunted Hawthorne Hotel. I love staying in haunted places. I stayed in a haunted castle in Ireland once and it was just the most fun experience. The next trip I want to make is to Woodstock, Vermont. Woodstock is a picture perfect New England village and it's actually voted the most beautiful village in the US. It basically feels like a real life Stars Hollow. One of the top places to visit for me is actually just a fence 
but it's this beautiful iconic fence that I've seen in so many TikToks and Pinterest photos. It has pumpkins lined up on the fence. It literally feels like something out of a movie. Just walking along that street in a cozy sweater on the way to a bookstore, I don't know what it is, but it makes me feel like I am the main character in Gilmore Girls. And that might sound silly, but to me, it's like I live for stuff like that. So <laughs> I'm so excited. Look at me being so excited to go visit a fence. I mean, do what makes you happy, kids. I'm easy to please, what can I say? Other than visiting the fence, I don't have a lot of specific things I want to do in Woodstock. I really just wanna grab a warm cup of chai, put on a cozy sweater and walk around the town. I do, however, though, want to stay in the Woodstock Inn. This place looks incredible and they decorate it with pumpkins. They have like themed dinners and make it very cozy and autumnal in September and October. And then I also really want to visit Sleepy Hollow, New York. You can visit all of the locations from the Sleepy Hollow book, including the actual graveyard where the Headless Horseman himself is said to be buried. I know that you can visit Washington Irving's house. He's the author of Sleepy Hollow. And sometimes they have performers outside the house who will dramatize the book. So you can listen to it all orally, which I think is really cool. I love stories and audiobooks, but being able to watch somebody perform it, I feel like would be a really cool experience. And I think they do it at sunset or after dark as well, which is even more spooky. There's also a haunted hayride at De Piro's farm. I might be saying that wrong or even have the name wrong completely, but I've heard that it's actually quite scary because you go on a hayride into the woods and it's really dark and they have actors, almost like going through a haunted cord maze, but you're going through a haunted woods and people will scare you along the way. There's also the great jack-o'-lantern blaze, which I've heard some people say is their favorite part about going to Sleepy Hollow. It's hundreds and hundreds of jack-o'-lanterns all lit up in the dark and they're used to make figures of like horses or ghosts or skeletons all on top of each other. I think I'll feel like I'm walking through my own like over the garden wall episode. The sun is going down, as you can probably tell. And I think that's just about everything I have planned for autumn so far. I hope you enjoyed the coziness. I'm just so excited. And I'm not gonna apologize for being excited for fall already. It's in my blood and I'm not going to deny it. And if you're one of those people as well, let your love for fall just shine. And it doesn't matter if people think it's too early. Do what makes you happy. Live your best life. I am gonna go watch some Scooby-Doo and cozy up with my new pillows and I will see you very soon in a new video. If you watched to the very end, thank you for being here. I know this wasn't like my usual content, just sitting down and chatting with you. So if you are still here, thank you so very much, friends. I appreciate you so incredibly much. And thank you to my patrons over in Honeywood Hollow. This channel and this video would not be possible without you. So Thank you so much. If you have any recommendations for things that I should add to my itinerary or books that you think I would enjoy, please let me know down in the comments. I will see you very soon in another fall video. I think this is like the start of my fall season. Ah, I'm so excited. Bye friends.